bless you. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle Peter Daniel, by the special grace of God. Today you are watching me in the live program, Heaven and Hell. And uh, today we are in the, the, the time that we know as the time that Jesus Christ uh, died and resurrected on the third day. Uh, we are not celebrating the day. We are rather teaching the people what the day means. So by the special grace of God, I want you to listen carefully to this special message from the living God so that you can understand that it's not by killing chicken and uh, eating food that these days is meant for. It's not meant for that. Is more significant and important than the way you think it were. So, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's quickly have a prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Glory, the Esadai, the Elohim, the Adonai. We bless your name because you are the Almighty. Vekatu zika belivru ne vazaji tatif se ketelovore teili kandivala. O Lord God Almighty, we pray this this hour, this morning, the leave of Ozibe Kavarova, that you will release the power of God and the grace of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will fill our heart with the heart of fire. We open our eyes to see the truth. Thank you, Father. Because everyone that hears me will be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Name we pray, amen. In a quick one, I quickly go to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. I will quickly try to summarize it within a second, and uh, uh, you can understand it. I might not be able to go too deep, but at least I will summarize it so that you can understand what the death actually means. In the book of Matthew chapter 27, starting from the um, from 48, from 45, Matthew 27, Matthew 27 from 45, 45. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. We are talking about this Bible story. We're talking about where Jesus Christ was crucified. The Bible says there were two good hours, three hours between the time of the sixth hours to the, the ninth hours. There is darkness, thick one. There is a thick darkness. So, which means within the time of uh, 12 or to 30 or so. 12 to 30 or so. Yes. 12 o'clock to 30 o'clock. They were thick darkness. I think within that moment, I think so. Um, they were full darkness all the land until the night hour. So it means that it's not just in that place, but in all the land. Probably it might include the whole world. It is not just Israel, but the whole entire world, they were full darkness, which means that it was during the day. It was not just, it was during the day, and suddenly the sun off. The suddenly the sun stopped turning and it went off. The moon that's supposed to give light doesn't give light at that time. So at that moment of time, everywhere were thick darkness. No light at all. People were just roaming around. They don't know what to do. Things that has not happened before happened within that hours of time. <laughs> now, what this says, I'm going to tell you what happened there. At that moment that that thing is happening, there is a spiritual, uh, spiritual, undergoing oppressions in the body of Jesus Christ at that, at that moment. At that moment, 
the old earth was being sure that is true. Now the old earth was being given the true color which he is. When you wake up in the morning, you see there is already morning sun, sunshine in the morning. There is moon in the night. But the actual truth that in the spirit realm, the dark, the world is full of darkness, no light. So within the space of that time, that three hours, the true color and the true identity of the world was revealed. Not only that, there was an there was a there, there was a key that was being given at that time. There was a portal that was being opened at that time. There was a significant incident that happened at that time. So at that time, Jesus was carrying the whole sin of the world. That is why the world has to be come to appear both in the spirit and in the head. They have to, he has to come out with his with his own real identity. The identity of the world was true darkness. The one you are seeing that you are seeing light was a lie. So the world has to come. At that time, Jesus was carrying the whole sins of the whole world. At that time, before that time, uh, before that time, and after that time. Which means that Jesus was carrying the sin from the sin of Adam and Eve. Till the time of his time, and till the time of my time, and till the time of the next generation, if Jesus Christ has not quite come. Which means he carried the old sin from the beginning of the head to the end of the head. Some pastors or some people will say that uh, it is not true that Jesus was just carrying the, the sin of the, his own time to the next one, you know, from New Testament, that is why there's New Testament to the next generation, whatsoever generation that might come after that. No, it was not. Because something happened after that, which I will tell you, that will tell you that it was carrying the sin of everybody. The sin of all humanity that have come into this, this earth, it carried their sin on the shoulder. It was so heavy for him. Immediately after the darkness, and the sin was so shook, the heaven left him. The heaven left him. The agreement within the Father was not there any longer. Which means that, I'm talking about, there's a kind of conjunction, a, a, a joint unity that joined the, the, the Father. He's still the same Jesus Christ, but, you know, in heaven, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were you know, now, they were divided in heaven, but they are one, they're truly one. Now, there is a kind of conjunction unity that joins them together, that no one can separate them. No one can come before them. For the first time since to when they have been, they have been, they have never been in this unity. But at that moment, God left him. He, le he was the only one, the Holy Spirit was not there to comfort any longer. The angel left him completely. He was only one. At that moment, it was a great agony. It's, it, it's, it's a serious matter. For the whole three hours, there was a serious agony in him. He was carrying the sin of the whole world. Carrying the problem of the whole world. Carrying everything of the whole world. Let me quickly go to the next one because we have no time. 46. Verse 46. He said, and about the night hour, you see that now? Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbat Shetani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? The other, another verse says, my father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? For the first time, we got to know that throughout the, 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 the Jesus Christ on earth, there have never been a day whereby the Holy Spirit left him, the Father left him. No. He said what the Father says is, he said what I say is, I, I, is what the Father is saying. Which means everything about Jesus Christ was through the Father. About him was, but at that moment, he was the only one carrying it. The Father have to be left him. So that is why he shouted and said, ah, why? Because the only abomination God cannot adjust in the body, in him was sin. Sin is not something he can just, you know, he can overlook and just say, okay, 
no matter the you know the kind of relationship I went to, let me start still stand with you. He can't. It is difficult. Amen. Now, 47, I want to make it fast so that at least you can get one or two points from there. Some of them that stood there, when they had that, say, says, this man called for Elijah. That is not so. And because the language he was speaking was a heavenly language. See, they have to interpret. It was by, even by the interpretation of God that I made the apostle know the interpretation. So it means it's not a language that they are, they are well known about. Amen. Now, he said in the 48, he said, and straight way, listen, straight way, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with a vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. 40, 49, because he was thirsty at that time. 49, the, the rest said, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. He is not calling Elijah. He was only speaking to the father. 50 now. I want us to do everything fast, fast. Jesus, when he has cried again with a loud voice, he then up to the go. After the cry of Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbat, Shabbat, after that cry, he later cried again. This one is one is a terrible cry. He cried and his, and, his, and his ghost came out of his body. Which means his spirit, that's what the Bible says. His spirit case came out of his body. Now, listen to me. Verse 51. Something happened. And that is exactly what is happening since yesterday to now. And that's what I want you to know. Now, from Friday to Sunday, he died on Friday and he resurrected on Sunday. Between the time of Friday to Sunday, there's something that happened. And that is what we want to discuss today. Now, listen to me. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom and the earth did quick and the rock rent immediately died there is a place we call the most holy place this place only the high priest of those days of Israel that can go there and if he must go he must make a sacrifice because there is a big angel there that is where the ark of the 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 the, the, the ark is that is where the, the rod of Moses is so they still practice it there. The denied way, denied way. So now there is a curtain that divides that place that no man sees what is inside there. No man sees everything. But immediately Jesus Christ gives up the ghost. What happened is that the Bible says that that garment, that garment that covered the laws, the, that is where the ten laws of Moses were kept. That is everything where it was kept. Everything. He said, the, 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 the garment where they cover it, the garment turned into two, into two. It means it was made open. For the first time in history, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant was made disgraced. It was made embarrassed. Now, it was torn. The meaning of that turning, the turning of that garment, that was what bring, um, that is what gave birth to New Testament of the Bible. In those days, people were following laws to law, the law of Moses. People were following laws to law, the law of Moses. And what are the law of Moses? The law of Moses are include you must not walk on the Sabbath day, which means that you must completely not walk at all, which means you cannot cook. Even though it is necessary, you can't do it. If you see somebody die, you must not help the person. There are many laws like that. Not that you can still work on the Sabbath day, but at least there are some things that is necessary that you can do that God will not hold you charge as sin. But then you there's nothing like that. Whether it is important or not, whether your child is dying like that and you need to go and treat him, they will tell you, you must. If you try to treat the child, they will stone you and the child to death. 
So there is this kind of law. There are many laws like that. You must not eat this. You must not drink this. You must not do so ever. This law was cut off. It was broken. Immediately, it was broken. Now, immediately, it got broken. Something happened. His spirit came. Now, good. Let, 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 let's read let's 51. Okay. And that's 52. Okay. He said, the, 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 the garment turned into two, and the earthquake happened, which means the ground also opened. So, for the first time, those who were kept in hell fire were released. I know you have not heard that one before, but we read it now. For the first time, the gate of air opened because air is in down, it's not up. Air fire is down, it's not up. So the ground opened, earthquake opened, that the ground opened into two. And it opened like that to hell. Now, he said the rock also rented. Let me tell you something. You didn't know what happened between Friday and Saturday today. And Sunday, between the moment of these hours, let me tell you, it's not only that day that that thing is still happening. Anytime that day comes, there is still a significance that set people free from bondage of whatsoever the devil has put them in. But if you are ignorant of these things, you might not be free. So you need that to understand the kind of these things for you to be totally free. Because if you do understand the significance and the importance of these times, you will keep on having the same problem. You will keep on being a bondage. It's a time that all bondage that have been kept in this time of Adam were set free. In those days, David was not taken to heaven. Samuel was not, when he died, he was not taken to heaven. He was kept in a place that is uncomfortable. It was after the death of Jesus that they were all loosed. Now, immediately when he died and his spirit go come out, this thing happens. Let me, let, 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 let me know. It happens. Now, look, let, let's read what's happening in 52, 52, 52. It said, and the grief, see now, is what I'm saying now, and the grief were opened, and many body of the saints, you see that, which were slept, arose. You see that? So they were in a particular, they were not carried to paradise. That was the reason why Sam, uh, Saul, King Saul, was able to go and call out his spirit for an inquiry. As any prophet, prophet Samuel was in the air he cannot ever invoke his spirit. For we are. So it was because he was not yet in heaven. All of the saints, our father Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob, I mean, which uh, is Israel, and many of them like that who died, they were all under the bondage of power of hell. Because there is a king that was taken away from the Adam where he ate the fruit, the fruit of the knowledge. When he ate it, something happens. There is a king God gave to him to control all the universe. That king was taken away from him. And he was given to Satan. So they were all under him as they died. Which means that whenever they died, the devil come to take their dead. Instead of an angel. Now, listen to me. That was exactly what happened to Moses. When he died, the devil wanted to come and take the body of Moses as usual. The way he usually take their body. Whether they are holy or they are not holy. Whether they are saved or they are not saved. Because the key was still in his hand. But Moses has seen the Lord. That grace that he has seen the Lord make him to have the privilege of not being on that end. And another thing is that Moses too was, there is a written 
destiny about him that he must come again inside the world. So he cannot be under him. So there is a there is a kind of covenant that God has given to Moses. At that time, God wrote the book, the name of Moses in the book of life. For the first time. Now, that was the reason why the angel has to come and fight for it. It's not because of the anger that Moses got angry there that caused him. It's not about that. But because there is an authority inside his heart. If it was because of the anger, if God didn't forgive the sin of Moses before he died, he would have gone to hell. Because there's no forgiveness after death. But the Bible said he asked for mercy, but God has already spoken that he will not get to the promised land. Now, let's go back to where we are going to. The Bible said, and the saints which were asleep, they woke up. Verse 53. I'm still going to explain that place for you. It said, and came out of the grief after his resurrection. Listen now. <laughs> Listen to me. There's something I want you to understand. Now, I want to try to, my possible best to make sure that you could understand what I'm trying to teach you today. Now, he said, and listen to that statement. Listen to the English. And they came out of the grief after his resurrection and went into the only city and appeared unto them. Now, what happened is that immediately he died, the earth opened. Those who are sleeping before they wake up, but they did not wake up into the world. They only wake up in the spirit. Don't forget that a statement was ushered out from the mouth of Samuel, where when they saw King Saul was making an inquiry about him, that uh, he said, why are you disturbing me? So when they sleep, the only difference is there. The difference between the saint and the sinner is that sinners are always going to be born. They are born, you know. When they died, they just go born or they will be tossing somewhere, I don't know. But now, but the saints are not tossed but they were under the canopy of death. They are not going anywhere. They are like captured and captivities. They are under a bondage. Inside there, immediately Jesus Christ came there, they all opened their eyes, which means they were alive in the spirit, but not physically not active. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I am saying. Listen to what I am so that you could understand me clearly. Don't forget that this, all this man I'm talking about, Abraham, the, between the time of Abraham, Adam, and Eve, till Jesus Christ's time, it was thousands of years. So their bone has already rusted. Sir. Their body has been rusted. Their bone is only, you know, and their bone has been scattered. See, there's something that happened there. Number one thing that happened is that immediately Jesus Christ died. Their body became normal. Amen. Now, when he died, they wake up in the spirit, but physically they are still nothing. Now, listen to me. Immediately that happened, Jesus Christ went to the pit of hell. To go and preach to them again for that thing within the rate of that Friday to, to Sunday. He went there to go and give them the last one, and they, he went there to preach to all the dead. And they accepted him as his, their Lord and Savior. And now, immediately they accepted him, he came to save them, he collected the key. Even when he arrived there, he collected the key from the death. The key that was given to her, that was given to Adam, that he stole by tempting them to sin, he collected the key from them. Immediately, they con he collected the key from them. What actually happened is this. Listen to me. 
those who believed, those who were saved. The Bible said, when he rose up from the dead, don't forget Jesus Christ have died on Friday. On Sunday, he, Jesus Christ rose. When he was rose up from dead, all the people who were saved, when they have died, they think that their body has been roasted and become sand. Their bone has been scattered. All of them gathered together. Just as what is in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. The incident that happened there was exactly the incident that happened on that day. Ezekiel 37. Let me quickly see you. I'm going to read. Now, nah, 37. He said, listen to me now. He said, the Spirit of God take in Ezekiel to a dry bone. And God told him, can a dry bone, if you read from verse 1 to verse 10, he spoke about it. He said, can it lives? And Ezekiel said, now you know it. And God said, speak. And the Bible said, the bone joined the bone. The flesh came back to the body. And uh, he breathed onto them, he, he prophesied, and the breath came upon them, and they came back to life. What happened to them when Jesus Christ died was that the bone first came to God together, but there was no breath in them. That was the meaning of what you saw by saying that, and the grave were open, and many bodies of the same which were, 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 were asleep arose. But the spirit is still there, the body has already been set. They were all set back on the on the on, on the ground all of the body was set back but they have not yet come to life if you look at ezekiel i'm looking at it i will have read it here let me quickly read something here maybe i can just quickly fast oh god let me read verses uh, five and thou said the Lord upon the bow, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and yes, I live. Now, and, and I will lay sweet upon you. Now, if you read it because of time, just go and read it on your own. Verse 135, Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 10. Read it, is there. What happened today was what happened here. Their body was set. Now, which means. When their body was set, immediately Jesus Christ rose up. He came with their spirit. The way his spirit was coming from hell is also the, the, the spirit of the saint also came from hell together and they rose up at the same time. And that is exactly what is going to happen on the rapture day. That is exactly what is going to happen. Those who are dying in the Lord are going to hear the trumpet sound. Their body will be joined together. Whether they die in the water or they die by sickness, they die by accident and their head was spoiled, was, it will come back and fuse together. Whether they are already here and become sand, it will come back together and become one. And from there, they will rose from the dead. With Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will blow this, the, the angel will blow the trumpet and they will rose. And those who are alive will not follow. Now, coming back to the significance of these things, the Bible says, after, now let me read the 33 again. He said, and came out of the grief after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto men. So they came to woman be. After, after the resurrection, they became woman be and began to appear. He said, I am. But Father Abraham said, hey, Jesus. You know, they were like surprised. Now, listen to me. There's something that usually happens. We are not, the Lord did not say we should remember his day of Easter. I don't know who named it Easter. But one thing I know is that there is a particular idol naming Easter. And they, they were celebrating it almost the same time with it. God didn't name it Easter. If we are to name it, you name it the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's all. Now, in these days, any time you come to this day, there's a significance and a shaking in the pit of hell. And people are always set free. This is the time you can live a holy life. If there's a particular sin, maybe you are bought because one of the sin that God ate the most was abortion. 
if you have aborted before this time is the time you can ask for mercy and God will forgive you quickly if you are in one problem or in one disease or in one whatsoever this time is time you can talk to God and God will hear you just as the way he called the death of Lazarus and he said come back to life and he came back to life he will also call your home and we came back to life. Your destiny will come back to life. Your, 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 your life will come back to life. It is the time. It's the time to totally surrender and genuinely give your life. Because if you are not genuine, you will not be genuine. He knows the heart of man. He sees there. He knows it. It's a time you should repent from your, your sins and become genuinely saved. And he will deliver and set you free. There are many powerful, significant power in the days that he died and he will exhort it. And which you must not miss. Your destiny can be rewritten today. Between now, yesterday, and today, and next tomorrow, your destiny can be rewritten. So don't miss the opportunity. There is no difficulties that is too Even those who have collected vaccine by mystique, corona vaccine by mystique, you can use the opportunity to speak to God. I say, Lord, I want your blood that was shed to cleanse me. If there's a significant power moving in this time. It's not the time for you to go and kiss it in a gate. Don't put down any blood at the time. Don't lay down any blood at this time. It is a sin against God for you to kill anything at this time. It's not a time for hitting. It's not a time for slaughtering animal because the force be there. It's a time of a genuine consecration and repentance coming back to God in the original form. That's the time we are. Use it the medium. And speak to God. It's a remembering time for God. I won't go too deep. But the bad one thing I know about English is this. He said a word is enough for a wise. You do need to explain too much for a wise man or for a wise person to understand what you are saying. I pray you will not end up in hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. One thing I want to tell you before you go. If Judas is carried to us alive, he will have used this period of time to ask God for mercy and he will have become saved. I don't want to see that sin. I don't want to see that problem. I don't want to see that difficulties that God cannot remove at the present time. Because it's a time that God set free. Even for those who have died, if God can raise up those who die for thousands of years, more than four thousands of years, those who have died, more than four thousand of years. If God can release them from death, I don't want to know your problem. Forget it. He will do your work. I pray God will bless you. Those who are sick, I pray you get your healing. Those who are, are, are those who are, are sinner, I pray you you receive mercy. Those who their life is not right, I pray your life come right. Those who are Passing one problem, you have a debt to pay. God clear, God clear your debt and also lift you up. Those who have died in the spirit, I command revival. Those who are spiritually crossed, I command them rebuilt and repaired and restored. Those who are having one problem or the other in their system, in their head, I command healings. Those who are having sickness in their body, I command healing. Those who are demonic possessed or demonic disturbed, I command healing in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you and God be with you in Jesus' name. Shalom. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Bye.